Async Away can be an absolute game changer when it comes to writing efficient and responsive code for your C-Sharp application. However, there's a couple of caveats that you need to know about when dealing with exceptions with Async Await. They're simple, but if you don't know about them, they can really ruin your day. So here we have a simple application that just calls an asynchronous method. Our asynchronous method itself just makes a HTTP GET request to leaveralike.com, which doesn't actually exist. So this should throw us a host not found exception. But we have our error handling code in a try catch, so we should see our debug message actually displayed error downloading the HTML and our host not found exception. But if we run this, our application crashes with no such host known, leaveralike.com with error code 433. So the question we ask here is, why didn't our catch statement actually catch our exception that was thrown in our asynchronous task? So why does this happen? Well, two reasons really. First of all, our try catch will only catch exceptions in our synchronous portion of the code. And secondly, asynchronous methods don't actually throw exceptions. Rather, they just return a task object which stores any information about the exception should anything have gone wrong with the execution of that method. So how do we fix this? Well, one of two ways. We can either ensure that the await keyword is used within our try catch. So, Compiler here will moan because we can't use a wait unless it's inside an asynchronous method. So this will force us to make um, our methods asynchronous all the way up the call stack. So in this case, we can make our main an async task, and now we should just run fine. And here you can see we have now caught and handled the exception in, in the correct way. Problem with this approach is great if it's a new application or it's something small, but you might be in a situation where you are not at liberty to make all the calling methods also asynchronous. Or you might have a genuine reason to call your async method in a fire and forget way, so that you're happy to execute the async method, let it go on in the background, and then continue with your application. If this is the case, the more correct way to do this and the better option is to have a try catch block within the asynchronous method itself. If I run this now, you'll see we're actually getting our debug message with the exception. And notice how that this is being called after our end application debug message is being printed out. So the fire and forget fashion of this running and executing after the main thread has run is applicable. This approach also has merit where you have multiple tasks running simultaneously and you have multiple exceptions being thrown all at the same time. In this scenario, we fire off three separate HTTP GET requests to three separate fictitious websites and we should receive three separate exceptions saying that the host doesn't exist. As a side note, make sure to realize we're using a when all here and not a wait all. They are different. One performs its wait in a blocking manner, whereas the other one doesn't. It's easy to get them mixed up. If we run this, we only get uh, leaveralike.com. Even though they're all throwing an exception, the first one crashes the application, leaveralike.com over here. So once again, we could make it async task all the way up and await our multiple situations. This will now at least catch our exception. Only the very first exception is handled. The other two exceptions are discarded. Those exceptions could have valuable information that you want to log or store or do whatever with. So once again, we really want to wrap our asynchronous call in a try catch to preserve all that exception detail. And if we run it now, and you'll see we have all three exceptions being handled as you would expect. We don't even need to have the asynchronous uh, calls all the way up the call chain. We can still call our uh, asynchronous method in a fire and forget fashion. We don't even need the try catch here either. And if we go and run this, we are preserving all the exception uh, information from each of the exceptions thrown in the asynchronous calls. Previously, this was a lot more awkward. The when all used to package all of the exceptions into an aggregate exception, which you just have to unpack. Thankfully, we don't have to do that anymore. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.